So when it comes to capturing your ideas and your thoughts and your notes and organizing your life, are you more of a paper person where you use notebooks or paper to capture things? Or are you more of a digital person where you use your computer and applications on your phone and your devices? It's very popular to use either and people can be quite passionate about their preferred choice. There are those people who like to build a second brain in a digital way and there are those that like to use tools like bullet journaling so that they can do all their bullet journaling and use their paper journals to keep track of things. And the irony that I have a physical copy of the digital way and I have a digital copy of a paper-based way is not lost on me. And the reality is I use both because they both have their strengths and their weaknesses. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how I blend those worlds together, how I blend the paper world, which has that tactile feel, that, that ability to easily have a frictionless experience of just picking up a book and capturing things with that digital world that has that extendability, the ability to do more because you can add more nuance to it, you can add links, you can add more resources to it. And I'm a proponent of actually using both. The system that I use incorporates both and I think you might find it interesting. In this video I'll talk about that system and I'll begin by talking about something called the SAMR model. The SAMR model, which I did not invent, the SAMR model is a model that allows us to contextualize the use of technology and I think it's really really useful here in this context. So we're going to take a look at paper we're going to take a look at digital and I'm going to show you how I blend those worlds together. So if we haven't met or if you're new here, my name is Frank and I've been teaching for many years, thousands of students. I have a master's degree in learning and technology and here on this channel, we look at ways that we can use technology in order to teach and learn and be more productive. Technology as a tool with a functional outcome. So if that interests you, you can always like and subscribe, but let's take a look at paper, digital and how to combine the two. For many years I've been using index cards whenever I'm reading a physical article or book I'll jot notes down on an index card. I did a video here on the channel where I talk about using a learning journal in order to learn and the reason for that is because the connection between your brain, a pen and paper has been proven to be very effective at helping you retain information and helping you think deeply about the subject that you're looking at. And then what I'll normally do is take all those index cards that I had and I will put them into a computer and then I'll begin doing word processing and I'll be, you know, get my articles and put them all together. This is very common. In fact, for many of you watching, that might be your preferred way of doing things. So then the question is, if it's effective, if it's scientifically proven to help you retain information and understand things, why would we move into the digital world? This is where that SAMR or the SAMR model comes into play because if we're going to choose a digital solution, we should do so with intent. When I look at analyzing the way I use technology to improve what I'm doing, I can use the SAMR model to ask myself, is the technology I'm using an enhancement to the way I'm doing something? Is the technology I'm using transforming the way I'm doing something? If I'm just using technology to substitute one thing for another, then really I've just gone digital with something I could easily do on paper. But then when I use technology to augment what I'm doing, allowing me to have more tools or convenience, or modify what I'm doing to begin to transform the way that I'm learning, or then even redefine the way that I'm doing things by allowing me to unlock new tools and capabilities, such as adding videos to a note-taking, or even using artificial intelligence to allow me to do deeper research. And this is really important so that when I choose a technology, I'm choosing the right ones. So it's with this understanding that I am able to make better decisions on the technologies that I use for note-taking. And at some point, somebody's going to put down in the comments, video begins at 4 minutes and 10 seconds or wherever we are right now. But I do believe that it's important for you to understand why you're choosing a tool. And I think if you're building a digital paper hybrid system of your own, and it should be your own because it should work for you, that it should be something where you understand why you're choosing a tool. 
I don't know about you, but I do not want to have to take a 20 hour course online to do a note taking app that saves me five minutes or that doesn't really transform the way I'm doing work. Whenever I'm starting something new or planning something new, I begin with paper. I'll use a learning journal or a journal and I'll start writing down ideas of why I'm interested in that subject, why I want to learn it, why I want to embark on a new adventure. I'll put all of that in paper. And the reason I'll put it in paper is because paper is not distracting. Paper will be the paper, will be a pen, and will be my thoughts. I can also do this anywhere. It's frictionless. So I can take this to a coffee shop, I can take this to a park, and I can just sit down for a few moments and set the objective, set my plan in action. Once I've done that, then I'll move on to step two, where I'll start building a structure of what it is that I'm going to do, and that's where I move into the world of digital. The tool that I like to use when I go from the paper world into the digital world is a tool called Scrintle. I've made videos here on the channel about Scrintle in the past, and they are sponsoring an upcoming video on digital learning journals, but this video I'm just using a tool that I use all the time, which is Scrintle. And the reason I like Scrintle is because it has a very simple intuitive interface that allows me to move just into a pure substitution. So what I can do is instead of writing things in the journal, I can put it here on Scrintle. That's one way of moving into the digital world. But then I can begin the process of augmenting and modifying and even transforming the way that I work. So if I go in here, you'll see I have my desk, which is just a surface that I can work with. We have a comp documents, which are documents I can bring into the environment. I can have a board. Think of it like a large infinite whiteboard that I can post all my thoughts to. I have files, so I can bring in files that help support my research, help support the items that I'm trying to learn. I can put tags so that I can quickly sort through a large amount of information. And I even have an AI assistant that will allow me to get unstuck if there's something that I'm being challenged with and I need a little bit of help. Down here at the bottom, it's very simple. I can move around the board or I can move the board around, so I have a choice there. I can go in and I can create a new block. So creating a new block just creates a block of markup. So markup language is just a very simple language. You just begin with the forward slash and then these are all the things that you can put onto the first line here. So for example, let's say I want to put today's date. It puts today's date. So now you know when I was making this video. I hit enter and I can put in another block and maybe I'll put in a heading one, which will be a nice heading and why do I want to learn this? And you can see um, when I do this, this allows me to start building up the subject and take my notes from my paper sit down session that I had and I can make these a little bit nicer. I could go into this collection and I could change the color of it if I wanted to, just like I had put it onto maybe a green sticky note or something. And I can add things like video. I can, I can really start working and refining my ideas. What I'm doing now though is taking what I already thought of on paper and putting it into a digital format. Then once I have that structure in place, I'll expand on it. I'll give you a little preview of another video that I'm working on. This is the learning journal template where See, I have a learning journal. I collect by hand and then I expand. I'll use things like habit trackers and goals. I'll use different types of research that I have here. And the nice thing about this is that as I build up the board, as I build up the different blocks, I can do things like connect ideas together. So if I grab a connector here, I can just connect up. Maybe the idea of the learning journal begins with a collecting by hand and then expanding. If I was to move the board around, everything stays together. I have an infinite canvas, which is a nice uh, way to break through the limitation of paper where I might you know, run out of paper or I wanna add to an idea, but there's no space on the page. This is where the digital world adds to my work. Instead of being a distraction, this now becomes something that augments and helps me build ideas more effectively. I could even use artificial intelligence, which I used for this section here. 
And of course, that digital platform is immense. I can connect up to all sorts of resources, connect things together, search things. It's very powerful, but yet familiar because it has that desktop type of environment with cards and boards and makes it really easy to work with. But I'm not done yet because I come back to paper. I come back to paper for the reflection and the assessment of what it was that I learned. This gives me the time to get away from the digital, to get away from the distraction, and to go back to paper where I can write down my thoughts on what it is that I learned and what it is that I would like to do next. And that cycle of paper to digital to paper to digital is how I move through information. How about you? Do you use paper exclusively or digital exclusively? Do you combine the two in a different way? Comment down below. Let's share some ideas. Thanks so much for watching. I'll post a video that I did on paper learning journals and stay tuned for my upcoming video on digital learning journals if it's not already here.